Welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. I'm yours, Jack, and this is another video tutorial of Photoshop Elements. This effect that I'm going to teach you this evening will either work in version 6 or 7, or probably even 5 if that's what you have available to you. I thought seeing the uh, last video I did was a color sketch, I wanted to take you through the process of making just a, a black and white sketch or just a pencil sketch of, of someone or uh, something using one of your colored pictures. Let's face it, folks, you can go to a street vendor or um, you know a fair or carnival, and you can have a picture like this done, but it's going to set you back 15 maybe $20. Good for the starving artist, not good for your wallet, because you are a Photoshop Elements expert at this point, and you too can create these great effects, have this actually uh, developed or printed, frame it, pull on a wall, and nobody's going to ever know the difference of where you got it. Um, you know, unless you want to do that, have that bragging rights, and then you can say, hey, I created it myself. This is the picture we're going to actually create. Now, I'm going to take you through the steps to get to this effect, but I wanted to start by showing you what it's going to look like when we're done. Just like one of those shows where they put the cake in the oven, and then they go into the other oven and pull it out. There you go. It's already finished. All right, let's go ahead and close this out. We're not going to save that. We're going to go ahead and open up our image. Just right click in your organizer and just go to full edit. Here we go. Now let's go ahead and simply get started with this. First we do a control O or on the Mac it will be a command O and all I do there is I just fit the picture to the screen. Now at that point what we want to do is we want to convert this picture to black and white. Now you can very simply go under enhance convert to black and white or we can also do the control shift U. There we go now we just made it black and white. Now at that point what we want to do is take that image and we're gonna actually invert that image. But before we invert it we're gonna make a duplicate of it. So let's do a control J or on the Mac you're right command J. Now let's go ahead and invert that image and that's a control I or on the Mac command I. I just wanted to give you both of those and I'm sure if you use a Mac you already know all these key codes um, and the PC guys out there you probably know them just as well but I like to touch base with it and make sure everybody understands them. Now at that point we get a really nasty looking picture not much we can do with that. Wouldn't want to frame that picture. So at that point, we're going to go ahead, just like we did in the other tutorial, but as you notice here, we don't have any colored one. If you remember in the last tutorial, we left the color one on top and we, we shut off the layer, or the view, so we couldn't see it. Well, now we're just working with the two layers. Now let's go to here, to the layer styles, and change out the color dodge. At that point, it looks awful white. You're like, wow, Jack, we just blew this one. Well, now let's go to Filter, and we're going to add a blur. We're going to add a Gaussian blur. I'm going to pull this over here so you can see it. There we go. And mine's already set at a radius of 4.3. That seems to work out pretty well for me. It could be a little darker, maybe a little tighter. Like a 4.6 is good. But if you take this slider over too much, what's going to happen is you're going to change the whole effect of the picture. Not that it's bad. You can do that. It doesn't really look really sketched at that point because it's really heavy, but maybe you like that and you want to have one of those developed. You can also go very light, something like that. But like I said, 4.6, 4.7, 4.8 seems to work good for me. Play around with it and see what you like. Uh, let's even try to get a 5 in there. Maybe a 5 looks good. Then click OK. Now you can see we have a nice sketch picture. I did have a question come to me through email, so I wanted to try to explain this a little bit. Um, I think, you know, I just want to touch base with you again and make sure you understand this. As you see down here, I have layers. When I go to save this, I'm going to go to File, Save As. Now, Look here where it says .psd. All right, that's a Photoshop extension. .psd and .pdd is Photoshop extensions. 
what happens is if we save it as a PSD, we're going to be able to reopen that out of our organizer, and we'll still have these same layers right here listed. If you had 500 layers here, if you worked on a picture for a whole day, and you put many effects in it and changed things and added lighting and what have you, it'll save every piece of work that you created. Now, there's one bad thing about a PSD. You can't take that out and have it developed by anybody. You know, you can't take it to your local Walmart, your Kinko's, or wherever you may go to get pictures developed. I use online developers, but they're not going to be able to print a PSD off. So, you're going to want to change that and convert that to a JPEG. Here's the rule. If you ever want to go back and work on the layers again or do something else with that picture, with the layers you have already set up, save a copy as PSD. Now, when you want to take it to the printers, drop this down and save a copy as JPEG. Now I want you to pay really close attention over here when I go to save this. I want you to watch these two layers. All right. Now you see here these two layers did what we call flatten. Some people call it merged. But they, they came together. They flattened together. That's what happens when you save as a JPEG. All your work comes together because it has to be one file. It compresses the image. Much like the uh, one video I did of camera raw in the in the, the camera, if you just let the camera capture a picture as a JPEG, it's compressing all the information. Camera raw is kind of like layers. It leaves it hang out there. But the JPEG will compress this down. You click OK, and you're going to save that. And what's going to happen when you're in your organizer, just like before, now we have these layered up and stacked. And if you save the PSD file, you would have down here in the end, you would have the JPEG, if you can see right here at the end of this, it says .jpg. And you would have another one besides it says .psd. So I hope that helps to explain that a little bit of how to save files and it, you know a little bit better of how you would actually use those. Well folks, I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial of creating a black and white sketch. Or I'm just going to call it, I think I'll call it a, a pencil sketch. So you're creating a pencil sketch. And if you have to get a hold of me or you want to get in touch with me, by all means, um, leave comments uh, definitely leave comments on YouTube. I answer those. You can uh, send personal messages to me. That's available and open to you. Uh, video responses. I received one uh, about a week ago, and that's really interesting. Just send me a little video response so I can uh, watch you and hear what you have to say. And, um, you know, or just email me at jackstechcorner at gmail.com. I'd like to hear from you. Until next time, folks, remember, keep those cameras clicking. Keep the editors editing, and I'll see you back here very, very soon. Bye for now.